Well, there is much to talk about. Let's get to our panel. Joining us here in Washington is Rafael Bernal. He covers Hispanic politics and relations between the United States and Latin America for The Hill newspaper. With us from San Diego is Enrique Morones. He is the founder and director of Border Angels, a nonprofit group advocating for human rights and humane immigration reform. Oliver McGee served as a senior White House advisor to U.S. President Bill Clinton. He joins us via Skype from Lubbock, Texas. And also with us is political analyst and professor of communication and history at American University, Leonard Steinhorn. Thank you to all of you for being with us. Let me start with you. Um, we heard in Nathan's report there telling us that uh, Trump says he has the absolute right to declare a national emergency. That way he can bypass Congress, divert Defense Force budget <coughs> funds to build this wall. Question is, does he have that right? Well, he may. It will be challenged in court, so it's unclear how long it would take for him even to exercise that right. But even if he does, the larger question is, should a president be exercising that power for any particular policy measure? You know, he's calling it a crisis, and he's using his labeling as a crisis to be able to justify the idea that he might be able to use these emergency powers. But, you know, let's say President Obama talked about climate change as a crisis and began to divert funds from other parts of the government to be able to deal with that. Let's say another president said homelessness is a crisis and we need to uh, divert funds. That would be circumventing the political process, circumventing the will of Congress, and ultimately giving a great deal of power to the president. I'm not so sure that's what our founders wanted as in the person who uh, occupies that office. If he does go ahead and does something like that, Lenny, what would be the political consequences? Well, it would be big because what would ultimately happen is he'd appeal to his base by getting them all happy that he used this executive authority to be able to build this wall or at least fight the Democrats, right. you know, by getting it out there. Um, but I think there would be so much opposition and so much concern among people who would feel my gosh, he's overstepping the line here. He's assuming power. All of this concern that Donald Trump had these sort of authoritarian tendencies might actually be confirmed if he uses this sort of emergency power to be able to do something like this. We have a system which is built on checks and balances. He would be overstepping that. Let's go to Oliver McGee for his view on this. Oliver, firstly, why is this wall such a big deal with Donald <clears throat> Trump? And has he, in a sense, painted himself into a corner right now saying, I want this wall. I want the $5.7 billion. Uh, that's the ultimatum from him. Um, has he left himself very little room for compromise here? Well, the $5.7 billion is just uh, one-tenth of one percent of the budget. And if uh, we get some agreement on overall border security, that's uh, $25 billion or so. That's about five-tenths of one percent of the national budget. So we're really talking about small dollars here. Um, he is well within the uh, uh, National Emergencies Act of 70, I mean, 1976, that is. And that was a correction to the Article II of the Constitution that is silent on national emergencies. And more importantly, presidents in the modern president since 1976 have used this about 31 times. Uh, most of it's been affecting abroad, away from the United States, but it is there. And also, this is going back not only to his Article II powers to be the national security instrument, but also it goes back to English law, which says William Blackstone, common law, says that he could do this. And also, um, the 1215 Magna Carta, if you want to go back to English right. history. So essentially, we're looking at uh, the courts backing him on this. It's just a constructionist Supreme Court. They, are ten they will have a tendency to not assume the executive powers of national security implementation. And so they will basically back the president once he decides to right. make a decision. But Oliver, what about uh, Lenny's point that you're actually bypassing the built-in checks and balances here? Well, those built-in checks and balances are very well crafted out in the U.S. Constitution. In this case, for President Trump, is Article II. So Congress has its checks and balances as the legislature to come up with some options, lay them on the table, get to the negotiation. That's the reason why the president said uh, he had to use his BATNA. That's the best alternative to no agreement. He walked away. That's a very, very powerful negotiation ploy. Right. And now it's upon the Democratic Congress to come up with some options and put those things, positionings on the table. And I think they're afraid to do that right now.
Okay, Enrique, uh, of course, as we can see, this political battle is raging on, but what is the situation on the ground? How are people at the border being affected right now? You know, weeks ago we were talking about that caravan that was coming up to the southern border. What is the status of those people? Well, as you probably know, I live in San Diego. I was born in San Diego. It's the biggest border city along the U.S.-Mexican border. And I can assure you, there is no crisis on the border. The only <laughs> crisis in the United States right now is at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, where you have a person out there promoting lies and hate and racism named Donald Trump. I was just at the border this morning, because I lived downtown, not too far from the border, about 15 minutes. The border is, is uh, secure. Every single day, we have the biggest border crossing in the world at the port of entry in San Ysidro, where cars go across to do commerce, to visit relatives, to go shopping, et cetera. This wall that exists right now, which covers a third of the U.S.-Mexican border, the U.S.-Mexican border being about 2,000 miles, has 700 miles of wall. It's led to the death of 11,000 migrants since 1994. Trump has not added one inch of wall. He, like other presidents, has rebuilt some of the wall that's kind of falling apart and so forth. So instead of taking 15 seconds to scale the current wall, if he had a 30-foot wall, it would take 30 seconds. We've seen that the people that have arrived on the last of the three major caravans over right. the, the year and a half, that they have come predominantly to seek asylum. They jump over the wall. The Border Patrol starts shooting at them. Children have died in New Mexico. Yeah. These people are fleeing violence and, and hunger. They have every right to cross borders. You know it has to be a, a, a violent situation to seek asylum. Right. But Trump is blocking them from that. It's an inhumane situation that's going on. And it's terrible what the United States is doing with Donald Trump. Okay. Uh, Oliver, let me get your response very quickly, please, to what you just heard Enrique say. There is no crisis. Uh, and what the president has been telling us is not, has not been the truth. Uh, we have a backlog in the immigration courts of 800,000 uh, asylum cases. And most of them are economically driven, so they have no claims of asylum. So really, this is really not what my colleague is really saying. It was great pictures for Donald Trump to show up at El Paso because yeah. most uh, crossings of the border, international crossings, like across in Europe as well as over here, is legal. Yeah. This is about... Our apologies. We had a problem there with that line to Oliver. Let me come to Rafael. Rafael, uh, if you look at the political situation right now, both sides are standing their ground. Nobody's giving an inch. Uh, I mean, what, is, what are the chances that this could be resolved in the short term? Um, little to none. Yeah. It, it, it's absolute stagnation because the they're parting from very different facts. And, and one thing that's very important to remember with the Democrats is that they just overwhelmingly won a House election that President Trump tried to make about a crisis, what he calls a crisis at the border, and they don't buy as a crisis at the border. Uh, one, one very clear example is of the nine border districts, only one remained Republican, and that Republican, Will Hurd, he opposes the wall, and he, he won by an inch. Yeah. So it's, like, that Democrats have no reason to, to pull back. And President Trump, who's a very big believer in the power of his base, has no reason to pull back either. So Ultimately, is this about politics? Absolutely. There's, there's no doubt it, about it. And, and, let's and, also remember, I think it's important to remember I'll that. I'll get to you, Enrique. Just finish what you were saying. It, and yeah. because of the, the definition of crisis, if mm -hmm. it is indeed a crisis, it has been a crisis and a diminishing crisis okay. over the last 20 years. Because yeah. as, as your report said, right. uh, 20 years ago, you had 1.6 million people getting apprehended crossing the border. Right. Now you have about 400,000 people a year. Okay. And the Border Patrol is uh, capturing a larger proportion of those who attempt to cross. Okay. Then, yeah, we'll get you. Enrique, very quickly, please, if you could tell me what you wanted to say. I was just going to say that, let's not forget, he made the point that right now undocumented migration yeah. is at a 40-year uh, low. It's at a 40-year low, and most undocumented people crossing borders don't go to the United States. There's 250 million undocumented people in the world. U.S. only has 11 million. It's at a 40-year low. There is no crisis on the okay. U.S.-Mexican border. All right, Lenny. And to add to that, no. uh, a majority of the people who are coming in illegally are people not crossing the border, but they're overstaying their welcome with the visas that they already have. Why is the president fixated on the southern border? He talks about crime. Well, Toby, in your first part of the mm -hmm. show, said it, it's, you know, there's 
actually, you know, not as much crime as people think. Drugs. Drugs are coming in through legal ports of entry yeah. or being shipped overseas, the fentanyl. So why is this fixation? You have to think that Donald Trump, looking at his history, does not want what I would call the browning of America. This is why he is so focused on the southern border as the primary problem and the holy grail of his political career. Yeah. This is, this is, what else, how else can you conclude? But Lenny, if we're looking at this as Donald Trump playing politics, talking to his base, are the Democrats also playing politics with this? Because back in 2006, there was bipartisan support for not a wall, but a reinforced fence to be built. And it was supported by 90 Democrats. I mean, among the supporters were Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton, Chuck Schumer. But that's different from building either a concrete wall or steel slats, which the Marines have now shown you can saw through fairly easily if, if necessary. Um, so, uh, you know, what's the politics of this? Everybody agrees that you have to deal with immigration. Mm -hmm. Many Democrats tried to get a comprehensive immigration bill, you know, in the last 10 years, and that's been blocked. You have dreamers. Nobody's talking about dreamers right now. Why aren't they in, on the table? In other words, there are lots of issues related to immigration that are sort of not germane to this wall, but Donald Trump is making immigration the equivalent of building a wall, and that's so misguided. We have so many other issues, and in fact, Democrats support border security. Yeah. They want more technology. They want more telecommunications infrastructure. They want more agents out there. They just don't think that the wall is a viable way to deal with this issue. Yeah, no, I understand the technology thing, Lenny, but you know, uh, Nancy Pelosi said that the wall was immoral. In fact, her words was, this is an immorality. And I'm wondering why it's an immorality now and it wasn't in 2006. Well, the fencing is different from the wall that it's Donald Trump envisioned. the material used? But, you know, but here's the thing. Yeah. Right? What, you could potentially spend billions upon billions of dollars that could be used elsewhere and for other purposes right. for this wall when in fact the wall may not be at all feasible or workable or effective. It's immoral to spend our taxpayer dollars right. to be able to create something for the purposes of Donald Trump's fixation yeah. that may not be effective. Okay, let me go back to Oliver. Oliver, I'm going to let you finish that thought you had when your picture froze and then I have a question for you, but go ahead. Well, I just was uh, sharing that uh, the, many of the asylum cases, uh, 800,000 that are in the backlogs, are basically economically driven, and that, that throws out this asylum case. So uh, this is really about... Uh, um, Oliver, is it economically driven? We know that there is extreme gang violence, uh, drug violence in Central America that are driving those people out of villages, making their way up to the U.S. border, seeking sanctuary here. Yeah. Yeah, it's a $2.5 million business of gangs and violence and even terrorism uh, at the southern border, according to the Department of Homeland Security. That's a crisis, because when you're talking about national security, you can't have the front door open and then having all of that type of criminal operations taking place. Uh, th this is uh, um, not about morality, yeah. uh, Madam, uh, Madam Speaker. Mm -hmm. This is about national security. This is about the president invoking his national security powers like he did with the travel ban, and the courts backed him. Right. And more importantly, this is about him coming to his campaign promise, not about a wall necessarily, even though it was a big one, it was a big, uh, wonderful campaign okay. piece. You know, but it's but about immigration and, the, and, and, and how to define American culture. Okay, go ahead, Lenny, very quickly. Just let's be clear yeah. that yeah. invoking national security powers yeah. does not make this a national security issue. Okay. Yeah. If the president says it is, it doesn't mean that we are really facing a national security crisis here. Yeah. You tell me what our national security crisis here with the, is with the border. Okay, I want to go, Oliver. I want to go back to something else. You know, Donald Trump held a meeting with Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer at the White House, as we've just heard from our reporters. That meeting did not go well, and this is what the two Democrat leaders had to say after that. Let's watch. He asked uh, Speaker Pelosi, "Will you agree to my wall?" She said, "No." And he just got up and said, then we have nothing to discuss, and he just walked out. Again, we saw a temper tantrum because he couldn't get his way, and he just walked out of the meeting. If you don't understand financial insecurity, uh, then you would have a policy that takes pride in saying, I'm going to keep government shut down for months or years, unless you totally agree to my position. 
So, Oliver, we have those two leaders saying that. Now, you've got to add to that the polls which we have seen about this, and it appears the president is out of sync with the rest of the country. Most people in the United States, according to these polls, place the blame on Donald Trump. Uh, fewer place the blame on the Democrats. Well, we learned in the 2016 election, forget the polls, they're wrong, they're biased. More importantly, you know, um, I'm looking at this uh, discussion yesterday a little bit differently. Um, the president is coming in and saying, this is what I need. I need this $5.7 billion wall, yeah. and more importantly, it's one-tenth one of 1% 1 of the budget. And, and, and Nancy and Chuck are coming back and saying, no way. But the, he's asking, what are your positions? What do you have to put on the table? If you have nothing to put on the table except I don't like you, Donald Trump, and I'm not going to agree with you, you have no other choice but to use your BATNA, which is the best alternative to walk or no agreement. You need to walk away. Right. Okay. And now the discussion is continuing from the Oval Office at El Paso, and it's continuing in the national debate on this show and in the international debate on this show. All right. It's continuing, and that's what we're at right now. All right, let me go. Enrique, Enrique. Yeah. The table, how can the president negotiate with them? All right, Enrique, uh, the president tells us that this is about national security. Let's listen to some of what the president had to say. The Democrats, which I've been saying all along, they don't give a damn about crime. They don't care about crime. They don't care about gang members coming in and stabbing people and cutting people up. They don't care about crime. And if they're not going to care about crime, then I agree. They shouldn't do anything at the border. But I care about crime, and I care about drugs. We're spending a fortune on trying to stop drugs, and they pour in through the border. But I see it more now than ever before. The Democrats don't care about the border, and they don't care about crime. So, Enrico, here we have the president, who is clearly framing this as something to do with crime, as something to do with drug smuggling, as something to do with national security in the country. Donald Trump is clearly unstable. He should not be where he's at. I think we should invoke the 25th Amendment because of his mental state. The drug issue is a big issue. That's driven by demand from the U.S. market. Undocumented people are five times more likely not to be criminals. When there's a terrible crime that takes place by an undocumented person, Trump goes all over it, and he forgets to say that documented people commit much more crime per capita, much more. Law enforcement officers, 145 were killed last year, only two by undocumented people. None of them should have been killed. But Trump likes to base his, his whole motivation on lies and hate and racism and sexism. It's a very, very dangerous situation. The border has never been more secure. Less people are crossing now. It's a situation which the whole world is watching and yeah. laughing at Donald Trump. But it's a very dangerous joke. Two children just died in New Mexico last month. Donald Trump first dehumanizes people, children. Then he puts those children in cages, separated from their parents. They're tear gassed. Now children are dying. There is a crisis, and that right. crisis is called Donald Trump. Okay. He is unstable. He's promoting hate and lies. Yeah. It's very costly. It's costing human lives. All right. Rafael, uh, there's been, I guess, both sides agreeing for a long time that the immigration system in the United States is broken. It needs fixing. It needs reform. It needs revamping of some kind. Could one of the un unintended consequences of this political crisis that we're having right now be that both sides fix this? So that's actually more difficult for that to happen. Um, it, what, one of the problems with the, the immigration system is that the Trump administration and Democrats have a very different vision of what they should turn it into. Another problem is you have different groups of undocumented immigrants in the country. So whenever you start talking about protecting one group, then the other group comes up. And, and mm -hmm. that it has a tendency to snowball and get bigger, that debate. Um, and a third issue is the Trump administration believes that inserting DACA, for instance, with the, the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals right. Program, the Dreamers into this debate, is, is a bad idea because they think it's going to ultimately be ruled unconstitutional by the courts. But talking today to one Democrat expert on this, Pramila Jayapal, she told me that that's sort of a, it's sort of a straw man because the, uh, the DACA issue is no, nowhere mm -hmm. near the Supreme Court. So it, it seems right. to be a distraction. It, it, immigration is not the way to get out of a, of a lengthy debate in this country. Lenny, I've got 40 seconds. Go yeah, ahead. Let's also be clear <laughs> that what the Democrats have been proposing mm -hmm. are Republican bills that were passed in the last Congress. 
So in other words, the Republicans are the ones who are now sort of have to negotiate with themselves. The Democrats are passing Republican bills. They presented that to the yeah. Senate. Now the Senate doesn't want to pass bills that it already passed to give them to Donald Trump because Donald Trump has all of a sudden put his flag in the soil and said, we have to build this wall. This is a fixation. This is an obsession. And somehow we have to get over it, but it shouldn't come at the expense of 800,000 workers yeah. and all of the people downstream. Okay, we are going to have to leave it there. Thanks to all of you for being with us. That's it for this edition of The Heat. I'm Arnon Naidu in Washington, D.C. Thanks for being with us.